I often get asked to review all kinds of items and it was no different when a brand called Empire Gaming reached out to me. I didn't know them at the time, so I looked them up and they've actually got pretty good reviews, so I decided to give them a chance. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to a quick review of the Empire K900 RGB gaming keyboard from a brand called Empire Gaming. Um, a quick, some quick words about the company itself. It is a French startup company that um, that's recently started. They're selling all their items through Amazon because they don't have logistic backbone to to sell, have their own um, their own distribution just yet. Um, when I started talking to them, they had I think four products up. They already increased that. They not only do keyboards, they do cases and like AIO coolers, uh, laptop coolers, headset. Um, there's lots of stuff. Um, that uh, they're selling, I'll include a link to, to the keyboard here. You can go look up the other products if you're interested. So the keyboard we're going to look at here is selling for about 26 um, British pound, which is about 35 US or 30 euros. So it's it's a fairly uh, inexpensive keyboard. Um, but let's go ahead and let's uh, open it up and let's see what we get uh, what we get in the box here. First of all, we get a uh, a small like goodie back here. I'll come back to this in a little bit. We get some um, documentation, a manual, which you will need. Um, there's no software or anything external, like third party, or the, sorry, there's no software to the keyboard, no drivers need to be installed, meaning all the RGB and everything is, is controlled on board. Um, and as you can see here, there's a lot of key combinations that we'll have to remember. So I'll be keeping this handy with me um, as we go through the review. And then of course, we get in this small back here, the keyboard itself. Okay, I just quickly want to touch upon this little um, goodie bag, I guess it is, um, that you get with the, with the keyboard. And just get this open here. We get a lot of stuff in here. We get some like um, a small info thing. We get a uh, we get a, like a coupon code. We get some some stickers if if people are into that. And then we get this thick little thing here. This oh, I'm sure it's on camera is one of those you like stick on the back of your phone and then there's like a ring so you can put your finger in there and then you can like it's easier to hold your phone when you're playing games on your phone or watching videos or, or whatever you're use, using it for. Um, I thought it was a lot um, but I, I'll, I'll come back to this uh, toward the end of the video but at least that is uh, that's there. I actually had to write to them and ask what it was. I was a bit confused at the beginning but anyway that's there as well. And then there's a small like information about the uh, about the company, about the guys who started it. And uh, as I said, it's it's a startup, so so it's very, very new, and so there's a bit um, a bit of a description about that uh, also here. So let's talk about the keyboard itself. First of all, the cable, um, decent length cable, braided, very nice. Definitely bonus points there for braided cable. Um, the keyboard again, all plastic uh, construction here. Um, not too much flex, it feels okay when it comes to, uh, to stability. Um, on the underside of the keyboard, we have like rubber feet and uh, some small uh, foot stands, like flip out foots here you can use. Um, I would really love those to be a little bit bigger um, if that was possible, um, because I, I like to have my keyboards like fairly well declined. Um, so I, I, I guess I would like those to be a little longer, but they are the length they are, they are there, so, uh, so that is nice. If we move on and begin to look at some of the keys, out here on the side of the keyboard we find, um, we find three programmable uh, like macro keys. Um, again, this is all handled in keyboard, in, on the keyboard, so there's like a combination you press and then you can begin to, to, uh, to record whatever it is you want and then store it by tapping one of the keys. Um, I tried to see how much you could store. You can't type like long texts. I was able to think I get five or six letters stored in there at once. Um, so this is pretty much only good when it comes to um, uh, so like macro key combinations, that kind of stuff. Moving over to the rest of the keyboard, it is a what they call a semi-mechanical keyboard. That means that in its nature, it is a membrane keyboard, and it does you can feel that there's no doubt about it when you're typing on it. This is a membrane keyboard, meaning that the keys are a little bit more mushy when you're pressing them compared to if you're typing on a um, on a, an, a, a proper mechanical keyboard or a real mechanical keyboard. And if we take our key puller here and just quickly pulls off one of the keys, we get a quick uh, look at what's going on under the hood here. We can see down here on the keyboard itself, we can see the small dome at the bottom um, as part of the um, 
Um, I guess it's a membrane down there. Uh, I don't know how that exactly is, is, is set up, but we can see on the keycap itself that we have these small notches on the base of the keycap, which is what gives this this, uh, this mechanical feel. Now, one thing that I did notice when using this keyboard, I've been using it for about the last week or so, is that because this mechanical part of it is really only for the feel of it, you can get to a, uh, in a situation where you can go past this small, small mechanical notch and you haven't yet bottomed out the keys. There's still a, a, a small amount of travel before the keys bottom out. And only when the keys is bottomed out would you get a, um, a activation. So I would notice sometimes if I'm typing that I would miss a keystroke here and there simply because I would just um, like go just past that mechanical notch and you get that small um, tactile feedback, feedback, I would then let go of the key, not bottoming out the keys completely, meaning that I would miss a keystroke now and then. So for typing, this is not my, my favorite, type of, uh, favorite type of keyboard. Um, but when it comes to playing games on it, it actually works okay, because when I'm playing games, I'm, I have a higher tendency to, uh, to bottom out the keys than I do when I'm, uh, when I'm not playing games. But it's something to be aware of, that if you are typing a lot and expecting to type a lot of the keyboard, it may not, um, may not be the, the best choice for you. And one final note about the keys. Some of them are actually a little different than the rest of them. Um, most of the keys over here, the W, A, S, D, E, and Q, and I think R and F2, they have like a map of it here in the manual. Um, so also the keys like, um, like Tab, Control, Alt, the, key, uh, the, the arrow keys. All these keys are anti-ghosting keys, meaning that you can use more of them at the same time, as far as I understand it, without getting accidental activations of other keys. I, I guess if you use the others, I haven't been able to, to, to fully test that part of it, but at least it seems that you will not get um, like ghost activations with those keys. But it's, again, it's only on part of the board. I think in total there are, is it 19 <clears throat> anti-ghosting keys on the keyboard? And it's of course focused around the keys that you would most often use um, in a gaming situation. Okay, so the final thing I quickly want to touch on, of course, is the whole lighting mode. And this is, what I guess, one of the main selling points. It is a full RGB keyboard, as you hopefully can see. I hope it shows up well on the camera here. It has a total of nine different modes that goes from everything from like a, a slow, um, like a slow wave across the keyboard um, to one of them that I found a little funny, actually. Um, let's see if I can find it here. I think it was mode number eight. Yeah, there we go. So that now when you type on a keyboard, you have like ripples going across the keyboard um, from the key that you're typing on. Um, there is one other though that is rather interesting and I'll see if I can get, I think it was number nine. Yes, here we go. I really hope this shows well up well on camera. I'm gonna try to hold it a little closer. You can see here, this one is called sound. And as I'm talking, the keyboard lights up to, um, to the sound of my voice. Now, you might think, well, why is this so significant? Well, first of all, as I said, there's no software installed um, coming with this keyboard, and it's actually not using the computer microphone, because right now, the keyboard is being powered by a power bank. Um, so that means that there must be somewhere in this keyboard that have included like a small microphone or something like that in order for, to get this effect to work. And this brings me on to one of the complaints that I would have about the keyboard here. Even though it is a cheap keyboard, it's a budget keyboard. So I feel it's a little odd that you would spend, um, spend money on including something that you are only using for one of the nine um, lighting modes. I feel like it's probably not, doesn't probably doesn't cost a lot, but I just feel like that that money could have gone into improving the keyboard somewhere else. Um, I would have liked to see the keyboard being, have a slightly wider um, distance between the programmable keys and the, uh, the tab, um, caps lock and shift keys because I would sometimes, I would end up using the, the programmable keys out here instead because they are so, um, they are sitting so close. Um, and also the small phone thing we talked about at the beginning. Again, I feel odd that you, decide, that you would decide to include something like this in what is uh, essentially a, a, a budget keyboard. Um, I would expect something like, like small goody things like this when you buy a premium product. Um, this is a cheap keyboard, so it seems a little weird to me that, uh, that, that they've spent, um, spent money on something like this. I would much rather have liked to see that gone into um, to improving the, uh, the overall things for the keyboard. Um, and again, with that lighting mode with the sound, pretty much only 
Um, I, a few people would use that, many people would probably never use that mode at all. Um, and then that money that's gone into actually include that in the keyboard has been, well, for them wasted since they're not getting any value out of it. So that's some of the complaints that I have about a keyboard. So, so who is this keyboard from for? Well, as I said, it is a fairly inexpensive keyboard. So if you, uh, if you just want all the RGB, and um, well, you don't want to uh, hand out a lot of cash for it, and that you, if you can live with the, um, um, with the semi-mechanical keys, then this could definitely be a, be a keyboard for you. Um, however, if you are typing a lot on your keyboard, you're writing a lot of text on it, then this is probably not the keyboard for you. But anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this small review today. Um, if you did, give a like, subscribe to the channel, and again, remember that I put a link for, for this in the description, so you can go check it out over there. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and until next time, I'll see you guys in space.